Hello grade sevens, Helen here and that means it's another natural sciences lesson. And if you remember at the moment we are learning all about acids, bases and neutrals. But today the focus of our lesson is on neutral substances. So we're going to be exploring neutrals in a lot of detail. Let's begin. Remember that we have already learned that acids, bases and neutrals are three different kinds of chemicals and they behave differently because of the way they react with other chemicals. Remember when we were talking about mixtures and different physical properties of substances, we know that we put two substances together, maybe sand and water, and we could mix them. But we had a way to separate those substances because although the sand and the water were together in a glass or a beaker, we could physically separate them. The water and the sand hadn't chemically bonded or joined together. Now when we're talking about chemical properties of matter, we're looking at how different substances, when they're put together, they actually join together in a way that makes a brand new substance. So we've looked so far at acids, we've looked at examples of acids and we've looked at their properties. We've also looked at bases, examples of bases and the properties of bases. So now we have to focus on the little man in the middle, the neutral. Remember when we talk about something as being neutral, we refer to it as not having any particular one side or the other side. So it's not an acid and it's not a base, it's somewhere in the middle. And we can see that our little character used to describe neutrals or to depict neutrals, hmm, he's a very neutral character. So Almost all liquids can be described as an acid, a base or a neutral. So most of the things that we come across, we know that we can work out which kind of chemical they are. Which type of chemical substance depends on the type of ions in it. Now remember, we said that you are going to learn a lot more about ions in high school, but for now, you just need to understand that ions are particles that have different electrical charges. So hydrogen ions, and we write hydrogen as a capital H, has an overall positive charge. So we write it with a little plus sign to indicate that it's a positively charged particle. Hydroxide ions have a negative charge and we write them as OH with a little minus sign and remember that these signs are what we call superscript. They're written at the top of the symbols for the chemical. So we've got acids as having lots of hydrogen ions and bases as having lots of hydroxide ions. Now what happens when we have a substance which has mostly a kind of balance between the hydro hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions. In other words, there's not too much more of hydrogen ions and not too much more of hydroxide ions. It's kind of in the middle. And these are the substances that we call neutral substances. Now, when acids are mixed with bases, they neutralize each other. Now let's go into this property a little more carefully. We know that our acids have 
lots of hydrogen ions, lots of extra hydrogen ions. And the more hydrogen ions it has, the stronger the acid is. We know that our bases have lots of hydroxide ions. There they all are with their negative charges. The stronger the base, the more hydroxide ions there are. Now, when we combine these two substances, we end up with a new substance. It is not a mixture. It is not a physical combining together of sand and water, for example. This is a chemical reaction that takes place. And we can see that our positives and our negatives are going to be attracted to each other. And so they make a new substance, a brand new chemical substance. And we can't simply separate it by filtering or evaporating or distilling. All of those physical means of separation of mixtures do not work when we're talking about a chemical reaction. So the original acid and the original base that we used in our reaction, they lose their properties. They're no longer acids and bases because these positives and negatives attract each other and brand new substances are formed. And the interesting thing is that those substances are neither an acid nor a base. They are neutral. We already discussed the fact that maybe some of these substances won't be completely neutral. If we had a very strong acid, and a very weak base, we might not end up with a neutral substance, but we'll certainly end up with a new substance that is not as acidic as the original substance. It'll still be more uh, concentrated in terms of its hydrogen ions, but it will not be a neutral. So in order to get to a neutral substance, we have to make sure that our, let's do it up here, our positive ions, the hydrogen ions, are balanced with the hydroxide ions and then we have a neutral substance and it's quite a tricky thing to be able to get our substance completely balanced so that it is neutral. When you're in high school you are going to do lots of experiments to show how you can neutralize acids and bases and a lot of that is quite exciting because you'll do practical work as well. For now, all you need to know is that acids and bases combine to make a brand new chemical substance and that chemical substance is neutral. Now, some neutral substances are formed from an acid being mixed with a base, but other substances are neutral to begin with. So what are some of the neutral substances that you might be able to discover in your household? Well, first of all, pure water. Let's talk about pure water because we're going to talk about rainwater in another lesson and we're going to see that sometimes rainwater isn't pure water. So if we were to have pure water, this substance, pure water, is a neutral. So is it corrosive? Is it bitter? No, it has none of those properties of acids and bases. It is a neutral. Salt. This substance that you use and call table salt that you use to flavor your food, if we added salt into the water in order to create a salt solution, we also have a neutral substance. Cooking oil that you would be familiar with using in your household, that is also a neutral substance. Adding sugar to water to create a sugar solution, both the sugar and the water are neutral. So we can see that it is very safe to drink water. We can 
touch salt, we can touch oil, we can taste them, the same with sugar. These substances do not have the chemical properties of acids and bases. They are substances that originally are neutrals and they don't burn us, they don't feel slippery, they don't feel uh, stingy on our tongue, they are neutral. Now let's do an acid, base and neutral challenge. Let's see if you can remember everything that we've learned about acids, bases and neutrals. So our first question, what property do strong acids and bases have in common that neutrals do not have? Can you think of the answer there? Remember you learned this word corrosive. Strong acids and bases can burn you. They can harm substances that you spill them on, for example. So we give them the term, the descriptive term or characteristic corrosive, but neutrals are not corrosive. Let's move on to our next challenge. Washing powder, and I'm talking about the powder, not liquid washing or detergent um, solution. Washing powder is not slippery. It's a solid and it feels grainy to the touch. What must you do to the washing powder in order to feel its slippery base property? Can you think of the solution to that answer? That question, I've given you half of the answer in using the word solution. All right, so you need to create a solution. You need to add the washing powder to water and then you will have a solution. And do you remember what we called a basic solution? A basic solution is an alkaline solution and then you can feel its slippery base-like property. What acids are present in the substance? Good old orange juice that we all love. There are two acids present in it. Can you think back to when we looked at examples of acids? Do you remember that there is vitamin C and the fancy name for vitamin C is ascorbic acid and then all citrus fruits have another acid called citric acid. So did you remember the names of those common acids that you have in your homes? Which of these substances would have a sharp tangy sour taste? Now let's think of which property we're talking about. We're talking about taste and we're describing the taste as sharp, tangy, sour, so which substance are we talking about? Are we talking about acids, bases or neutrals? Which of those substances would we say has a sharp tangy sour taste? Shut it out, let me hear you. I'm sure you're all calling out acid. Remember acids have that sharp tangy sour taste. So let's look at these substances and let's put a tick if we agree that they have a sharp sour taste. In other words, let's look and see if we can recognize our acids. So soap, nope. Soap is a bitter, slippery substance. It is a base. Vinegar has a very sharp sour taste. That is an acid. What about apples? If you bite into apples, you get that sharp, tangy flavor that's quite refreshing in your mouth. And do you remember the name of the acid? Well, the acid in our apples is something called malic acid. And that malic acid is a safe acid to, to taste and to touch. And that is what gives our apples their very sharp flavor. Strawberries have lots of vitamin C or ascorbic acid in them. We know that salt is a neutral substance. We know that hand sanitizer is a basic substance. And what 
about salad dressing. Well, the oil part of the salad dressing is a base and the vinegar part is an acid because salad dressing is a mixture. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed your lesson. I'll see you for our next natural sciences lesson next time. Goodbye. Thank you.